going to be showing you how to make this adorable little coin purse. These granny motifs are really popular right now, so I have been making multiple projects using them. This is actually the African flower motif, but I'm going to show you how to make this really easily. So you want to use three to four colors for this motif. I chose to just use three colors for this one, but today I'm going to use four. And I'm going to use a 3.75 millimeter hook and an eight and a half centimeter kiss clasp. And this is an eight millimeter bead, of course, that's optional. So with your center color, you're going to chain four and then slip stitch to form a ring. We're going to be working inside that ring, so chain one. We're going to make two double crochet. Followed by a chain one. And then you're going to repeat that six times. So we've got two doubles and a chain one. We're going to do it five more times. So we're going to do two double crochet, followed by chain one, all the way around until you have a total of 12 doubles and six chain one spaces. So here I am at the end. I'm going to slip stitch into my first double to join, but you might want to count real quickly and make sure that you have 12 double crochet and six chain one spaces. It's important to have the correct number of stitches for this motif. So go ahead and slip stitch into that first double crochet to join, and I'm going to change colors, so I'm going to fasten off here. Now you're going to find one of those chain one spaces and in any of them you're going to join your new color there. So I'm going to stick my hook right there and then grab my new color. Now I'm going to chain one. We're going to do two double crochet, a chain one, and two more double crochet all in the same chain one space. So there's my two doubles. I got a chain one. And I'm going to put two more in that same space. We're just going to repeat that in every chain one space around. So of course we're going to skip the next two doubles. And then go into that next chain one space. And we're going to repeat that. So we're going to put two double crochet. A chain one. And two more double crochet. So you're just going to repeat that in every chain one space all the way around. So here I am at the end. I'm going to slip stitch into my first double crochet to finish off this round. And I'm going to not change colors here because I like my petals to all be the same color. So I'm going to slip stitch until I get to that next chain space. 
If you are changing colors, you're going to join in one of the chain spaces, okay? So here I am, I'm gonna chain one, and working into that same chain space, I'm gonna make seven double crochet all in that same space. This is going to act as my petal. I'm going to move to the next chain space and make seven more double crochet. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way around in each chain space. So here I have all of my petals made and I'm gonna slip stitch to join in my first double crochet and now I am going to change colors here. So I cut my yarn and I'm gonna join in the first double crochet of any of the group of seven. So you're going to chain one and then you're gonna single crochet in that same stitch and in the next six stitches. So just basically you're gonna put one single crochet in each double crochet of the petals and in between the petals we are gonna make a spike stitch to give it a little more definition. So there's my seven doubles there. I'm going to spike stitch two rounds below into that space there between right there. So I'm gonna make a single crochet stitch two rounds below, and that's, this is known as a spike stitch, or I've also referred to it as a drop stitch in the past. And so now we're gonna continue on. We're gonna make seven singles. We're gonna single crochet in the next seven stitches, and that should be across the petal. And then when you get to the space between the petals, we're going to spike stitch down two rounds below. So you're just gonna repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you at the end. So I wanted to remind you, don't forget the last spike stitch since we started with the seven singles. And then you're just gonna slip stitch to join. I'm going to change colors here. So I fastened off. And then you're going to spend a moment and weave in all of your tails. And for this project, you're gonna need one more identical motif just like this. So make two of these motifs and I'll meet you back. We are going to join the motifs and you want two of the petals at the top and the four petals at the bottom. So these two petals at the top are gonna to serve as our opening. And I'm using these spike stitches as a reference point. So you're going to mark the same stitch on both sides. I'm just going one stitch below the spike stitches. And there should be just two petals in between the marked stitches here. No more than two. This will be the mouth of our change purse. And then we're going to join both through both layers at the bottom four petals. So starting at the first stitch marker, we're going to join with a new color. And you're just gonna chain one, that won't count as a stitch, and we're gonna work through both layers until we reach the next marked stitch. So half double crochet into the very first two stitches. And then we're going to increase slightly right here. So you're gonna half double crochet, then chain one and half double crochet again, all in that same stitch. 
Now we're going to half double crochet through both layers in the next seven stitches. Make sure that you are going through both layers and that your stitches are lined up correctly. In your next stitch, we're going to make that corner. So that's going to be one half double crochet, followed by chain one, and another half double crochet all in the same stitch. Now we're going to half double crochet in the next seven stitches. Then we're going to do our little corner, so make a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, all in the same stitch. And then, of course, you're going to half double in the next seven stitches. So we're at another point, so we're going to make that corner stitch, so half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, all in that same stitch. Now we're going to half double crochet in the last three stitches here. I'm going to go ahead and take that stitch marker out. And now I'm just going to work through the front layer that's facing me. I'm only going to work through that front layer, and then we'll work through the back layer after that. So now we're going to half double crochet across the front. Half double crochet in the next four stitches through just the one layer. We're at that corner stitch again, so we're going to make a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, and in the next stitch. And now we're going to half double crochet to the in the next seven stitches. And then we're going to make another corner stitch, so that's a half double, chain one, half double. And then we're just going to half double crochet to the end. Now I'm going to do an invisible slip stitch so that my working yarn is pulled to the back so that I can continue on. So take your working yarn and push it to the back. Take your hook out of your working loop. Insert it from back to front in that first stitch of the round. Grab your loop, put it on your hook, and bring it to the back. Now I'm going to turn my work and just continue working across the other side. I'm just going to repeat the same thing I just did. So I'm going to half double crochet in the first five stitches. And then I'm going to make that corner stitch, which is the half double, chain one, half double.
Now I'm going to half double crochet in the next seven stitches. And I'm going to make my corner stitch half double, chain one, half double in the next stitch. And then you're just going to half double crochet to the end. You may notice that I was slightly off in my marked stitches, but it's not going to make a huge difference. Ideally, you'd want it to be the same number. And then we're just going to slip stitch to join in our last stitch and fasten off. We're going to leave ourselves a long tail because we're going to use this to sew it to the kiss clasp. I did not choose to buy embroidery thread for this because it, I wanted it to match perfect. So I'm going to weave in this shorter tail that we started with right quick and then we're going to sew it to the kiss clasp. So first thing you're going to want to do is split your end tail that we left ourselves in half. There's probably an odd number if you're using the same yarn as me, but that's okay. You just want to split it in half as evenly as possible. So if you have an odd number, one strand may have three and one strand may have two. Now we're going to use each half to sew each side onto the kiss clasp. So I'm just lining it up here and I'm going to sew. I'm using back stitches, but first I'm going to go in and out of that first stitch several times just simply because when you open and close it, it's going to receive a lot of stress on these end stitches. So on both ends and on both sides, you're going to want to go through the same stitch on the ends multiple times just to really make it sturdy. So you'll notice that I'm doing that here. I'm going in and out of the first stitch several times to really make it secure so that it doesn't rip with stress. And then once you do that, you're going to move across using the back stitch. So you're going to go forward one hole. And come out and then you're going to go back into the other hole that you've already went through. And go back in it. This is known as a back stitch. So then I'm going to go to the next hole and go out. And then I'm going to go backwards and go back in to the one that I just came out of. So you're just going to keep doing that all the way across and all the way around. So once you've sewn on both sides to the kiss clasp, this is completely optional. I do think it adds a really cute little embellishment. We're going to add a beaded tassel. So I cut a piece of yarn. It's probably like 10 or 12 inches long. And I'm just going to take it through the little loop that's already there at the top. And I'm just going to make my ends even and tie it in a knot to secure it. Then I'm going to thread both ends onto a yarn needle and slide my eight millimeter bead up to the top. Now you don't want to push it too tightly to the top or it's going to make your tassel poke out. So I'm actually going to kind of bring it down just a smidgen. To create my tassel, I'm just going to use my fingers, but if you wanted to use a piece of cardboard, you could use a four inch piece of cardboard. And I'm just doing it seven times because I don't want a huge tassel. And then you're just going to cut the bottoms to create tassel tails. Open the tails below the bead and then set your tassel tails in the center and then tie them around. And remember, be real gentle. You don't want your bead to be super tight against that loop at the top because it will cause your tassel to poke out weird. And then I'm going to use a gathering knot to secure the tassel tails at the top. So I just cut another length of yarn I did not measure, probably like six inches long. And then I'm just going to make the gathering knot near the top below the bead.
Then, of course, once you get your gathering not how you want it, you're going to cut the top one to the quick, and then you're going to cut the bottoms evenly of your tassel. I did not measure, I just sort of went to the length that I wanted. And you are done. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.